Maybe I should explain this comment I made at the end of my last video, which you should watch if you're not on the Canadian release schedule. Just click the inlay card and um, check out the Fluttershy Leans In video. Because it had nothing to do with the direction the season is going, even though the episodes do seem a bit simplified from previous seasons. But no, the reason I got nervous about this episode is how I qualify Best Pony. See, Pinky was my favorite for the longest time, but the way Starlight quickly rose through the ranks last season got me thinking. I always assumed Pinkie Pie was just tenured in my mind as Best Pony, but as it turns out, she was stuck at a particular level of favoriteness, and other characters could still move up relative to it. So if Starlight can surpass Pinkie Pie as being my favorite pony, theoretically, Sweetie Belle could too. And now I'm not even analyzing the show anymore, I'm analyzing the way I analyze the show. <sighs> if you give me a dollar on Patreon, I will spend it on a bullet that I promise to use on myself. <sighs> Anyway, this episode impressed me, and made me think annoyingly esoteric thoughts. Mostly about the timeline, which the more astute of my viewers will know I completely gave up on. How long has this show been going on? How old are the CMC? How long does 100 Moons last? I mean, Sweetie Belle does look a bit scaled up from season 1, or maybe it's just hard to find two shots with the same perspective. However, this episode makes me think of time on more of a micro level, specifically between Philly Vanilli and now. Zipper Will and her dog are definitely older, but now you have me questioning continuity between episodes, and Philly Vanilli no less. Oh, you, um, you didn't hear me, um, singing? Continuity is a is a dangerous game, but I suppose they never actually implied that she got the dog at the animal show? But where is he during this shot? Like how Rarity didn't get tipped off about the good times she had with Sweetie Belle by the baby blue sapphires? You know, like the major emotional turning point in Sister of Social? Was that because continuity is bunk, or is that because Rarity is a professional who keeps her personal stuff separate from her work stuff? Is this a new layer of characterization, or just lazy continuity? <laughs> we'll never know! Luna shaking Sweetie Belle out of her edgy, rebellious phase seemed to do a lot of good. Her willingness to humor Rarity went very far. It's no big deal. This is great! However, I did think they were supposed to have learned something about speaking up to their elders and Cart Before the Ponies. Plus, it's hard to speak up to older ponies. But you mustn't think older ponies automatically know best. Or is she trying to let Rarity have a relatively painless early midlife crisis? I realize that makes me sound like an old mare. This ended up being one of those too close to home episodes, for me personally. Simultaneously wanting to do something else, and anything else, and yet not wanting to look like a dick to your friends or family who uh, don't quite get you well enough. Even though this is an age and maturity thing rather than a crippling social awkwardness thing, it still brought a bit of a tear to my eye that I could relate to someone as normie as Sweetie Belle. Which, I mean, is why this show's fandom exists in the first place, right? Giving autistic faggots like myself something they can aspire to. Like being popular and good at sports. Or a princess. Or a psychotic philanthropist. Or even just having a job, a couple of friends who totally get you, and a family that you can sort of maybe tolerate in short bursts. <laughs> it's funny because it's true! <laughs> And it's also nice to see that Twilight Time wasn't a total fluke, and that Sweetie Belle actually is the best of the CMC. Relax. I got this. You sure you two can handle our client here? A few moments later... <sighs> it's not working. Maybe if the ball tasted better? We need Sweetie Belle back, don't we? That was never in question. Do you think Rarity might just be a little tiny bit unstable? Because twice she half begrudgingly acknowledges that Sweetie Belle has in fact aged. I guess duty calls and and you you have that now. What? Nothing, nothing. Go on. You used to love doing these things with me. That's just it. I used to. But then during the breaking point, she just kind of drops that and goes back to not acknowledging that Sweetie Belle grew up at all. And after everything I did to set up a whole day of doing her favorite things! 
And remember Applejack's day off? Like, this is the second time she caused her own problem with one seemingly out-of-character line. And this one was teased early on with how quickly she flipped on whether she was gonna go see Sweetie Belle in the first place. Way to immediately turn that around. So I can't tell if they're trying to set up a serious problem with Rarity moving forward, or if it's just a little sloppy writing. And the general problem with the CMC introduced in On Your Mark is still there in spades. I mean, how do you go through a five-year arc of teaching the CMC that getting their cutie marks too early would have been a bad thing, and then turn them into the fucking Cutie Mark Express Squad? I mean, they've had episodes devoted to how shit it is to get your cutie marks before you're ready. Like, I mean, they got their fucking marks by helping the girl who got hers before she understood how to wield the power associated with it responsibly. And the less... Oh, those cheeky cunts, that's their game. Ponies with cutie mark problems are hard to find. That is what they said. So they're going around helping young, emotionally unstable ponies get their cutie mark to ensure a never-ending stream of future clients! Holy shit! They're lucky their marks didn't turn out to be twirled mustaches. Okay, this is just fucking dangerous. I mean, I know this guy didn't look both ways, but there were still almost two casualties this episode. They yelled, look out, after almost running this guy down. And were A.B. and Scootaloo following Sweetie Belle on purpose, or was that just some framing device the writer tried to cram in there? I actually think this guy was trying to flirt with Rarity, and she just turned him down without a second thought. <laughs> now that we got that out of the way, subscribe for my upcoming parental glidance video. Oh my god, glidance? Seriously? Oh, that's worse than those second prances. And go watch my Cards Against Humanity playthrough. It features British Ninja, Zay Overseer, the guy who made Digimon Abridged, and Celtic Phoenix Productions.